Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. I hope you're doing well. So I've got a few minutes, I'm just kind of sitting in a coffee shop right here, uh, heading over to my Austin studio to teach a class. So for those of you who are in Austin, Texas, um, come down and join us, you know, we'd love to have you. Uh, Ken teaches our regular classes, um, but I get in there once a month as does Master Dave. So, um, so we have three locations, Flower Mound, Texas, Austin, Texas, and Irvine, California. So please come in, we'd love to meet you. Anyway, so today's topic is uh, jujitsu for risk mitigation, um, both in life and in jujitsu. So this is actually brought up by one of my instructors when I was looking for some topics to talk about. And his question is this, um, how about doing a video on how part of jujitsu is risk mitigation and how that even extends to the other activities that we choose to do in life. For instance, why I don't ski anymore or why I uh, won't ride motorcycles or bicycles, but I do ride bicycles occasionally, but uh, I just don't do stuff. Uh, because we want to, uh, to cut our risk in life so that we have more time on the mat. So first of all, jiu-jitsu, especially if you do the self-defense brand of jiu-jitsu that we do here at Kama Jiu-Jitsu, it has to do with um, probabilities, right? Now, we don't mathematically map out probabilities, but we do, uh, when, whenever we engage in any activity in jiu-jitsu, it comes down to how do we make it so that we can most easily prevail, right? Um, for instance, with our, our ladder in our curriculum, we break the positions out into two types of positions, whether they be red ladder or green ladder. Red ladder positions, the risk is high of you getting caught. Green ladder positions, the risk declines. So if you're in an environment of declining risk, that's where you should start to go for your offense. On the other hand, if you're in an area of high risk, then you want to just work on your defense and getting out of that bad area. So for me, as an example, not that I ski, I mean, I have skied, right? In my younger years, perhaps in my 20s and 30s, I would go, um, I want to live in California, I'd go up to Big Bear and go skiing every once in a while. But after a while I stopped because I just kind of imagine, you know, when you're skiing, you know, you have the two skis like this and, you know, anything can happen. And, you know, being that you have the leverage of the skis that turn and then your ankle just being the, the support area as well as your knee, uh, the movement of a ski, if your bindings are too tight, can turn your, your leg and you know break your ankle, break your knee, or even break your hip or dislocate them, right? And as a result of that, I just said, you know, I'm not really, I don't, I don't like skiing enough to do it. So I, I did it a few times and then I realized, you know what, this could get in the way of my jujitsu, so I stopped skiing. And it turns out when I went in to do my rehab on my knee after one of my knee surgeries, there was a gentleman in, uh, in my, my rehab place who was rehabbing his knee. Well, what happened was he went to Park City, Utah, and he got his knee destroyed. Um, I don't know exactly how it happened, but the PT was telling me that his knee was just, it, it just came apart. So it got twisted apart. But, and I said, so he's okay with it? And she says, well, believe it or not, yeah, because in Park City, they've got some top surgeons there, and they were able to, to reconstruct his knee. Uh, he didn't get any replacement, but they just simply reconstructed it, and they did a they did a really good job, so that he was able to use his knee again with a lot of physical therapy. But for me, I was already pissed that I was down from training to get my knees done, and that's just from wear and tear and all that kind of stuff. But for to have something unrelated to jujitsu hurt my knee, it would have just really made life really rough for me because I like training jujitsu more than anything. And the last thing I want to do is do another activity that could jeopardize that. Right? If you're in jiu-jitsu, your whole thing is, like I mentioned earlier, uh, protecting yourself from risk. Why would you not protect yourself from risk outside in life as well? Now, certain things you can't avoid. For instance, you have to, I have to drive in a car, which is a pretty risky thing to do. But in general, I don't do, I, won't, I don't usually play basketball. A lot of guys turn their ankles um, landing, you know, because maybe somebody's foot is down and your foot steps on it, you roll your ankle. Um, I don't do other kind of contact sports. Uh, I, I really haven't gotten into MMA or even boxing and all that because I don't want to sustain an injury doing that other activity because it'll affect my jiu-jitsu and I just love spending time on the mat. In fact, when I had my shoulder surgeries, I, I really didn't <laughs> like not being on the mat, but it was one of those, it was jiu-jitsu related. 
So that's just kind of a cost of doing business with regard to jujitsu. And being that there are significant costs of doing business in jujitsu, training, right? The injuries that you get from training. Me, myself, I'm not going to expose myself to another activity that could just add to it, right? Whether or not it's something that was injured because of jiu-jitsu and it just got finished off by not. So I'll give you an example. This particular gentleman who gave me the topic, he had um, a shoulder that was uh, very sore. And I'm not sure where it happened. It might have just happened over years of wear and tear. And he started jiu-jitsu later on in life, uh, went skiing and fell. And when he fell, actually fell on his shoulder. And whatever threads of um, tissue he had holding his shoulders together prior to skiing, were ripped apart during skiing. So he had to be out for months. I think it was at least six months before he could get back to training. But that was caused by skiing. Now granted, he did have the nagging shoulder injuries, but it was skiing that finished him off. In the, at the end of the day, it was good that he got his shoulder fixed, but I do see where he's coming from and I think the exact same way. So what kind of stuff do you avoid in life so that you can train jujitsu? Go ahead and put it in the comments below. And if you got this far in the video, I appreciate you watching our videos. And if you can, do me a favor, hit the like button. It really helps us. Uh, at the same time, if you think this video would be good for somebody, please go ahead and share it. And if you haven't already, click the subscribe button and hit that bell so you can get notifications of future videos. Anyway, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Happy training. Bye now.